Hi everyone, Dr. Omi from Pain Free and Fit. Today, a great exercise for those of you with lower back disc degeneration, herniation, and bulges. We're going to talk about how to train the upper back muscles to spare your lower back compression and irritation using the prone external rotation lift. Hope you enjoy. So many of my patients as well as my online training clients with low back disc degeneration, herniation and bulges fail to realize that there's a lot more to stabilizing the lower back with fitness and rehab exercises than simply local low back exercises and abdominal core exercises. Training the full kinetic chain from our head to our toe as it addresses the various biomechanical problems that aggravate discs is essential. Today we're going to be talking about an upper back and shoulder exercise which actually keeps the stresses away from your lower back and helps you long-term manage low back pain through this self-management exercise. Many times, disc problems, including degeneration, herniation, and bulges in the lower back, L4-5, L5-S1, L3-4, are aggravated by prolonged upper body forward slumped postures. Remember, the discs in the lower back typically are aggravated when the spine is flexed forward, when that curve in the lower back is lost and the upper body comes forward. It puts more pressure towards the front of the spine, compressing the discs and aggravating bulges, herniations, and degeneration. So today we're going to talk about an exercise that helps to undo and gives us the strength to avoid forward rounded shoulders, forward head, and what's called internal rotation of our shoulders. Most of the time with poor posture of the upper body, as the upper body slumps forward due to a work environment, such as working on a computer, watching TV, playing musical instruments, playing video games, our body comes in a forward posture. The shoulders not only round, but the actual upper arm and the socket internally rotates. All these together fascially, meaning the fascia which connects all your muscles and bones and organs, has a tendency to lock us down in this forward position. So this exercise is designed to open up that forward flexed position and extend or externally rotate the upper arm in the socket as we extend the upper back. As we extend the back and avoid flexing the upper back, it helps to induce that curve in our lower back, moving our center of body weight slightly backwards and avoiding that forward compression on our discs, which long term gives us the ability when we sit, when we stand, when we're working, to have the endurance and the strength to stay upright, avoiding that damaging forward posture. So let's get to it. It's done in a prone position on a bench with a few dumbbells, light of course, because you're working shoulder muscles. You won't be able to use the same weights that you use, let's say, for reverse flies or prone rows. But what we're going to be doing is, from this position, of course, engaging our RPI neutral spine position. Again, that's unique for each and every one of us. If you don't know what your neutral spine is, that's the safest position you put your lower back in. And RPI is reverse posture isometric, meaning you're contracting all your stability muscles and your weaknesses in your lower back. For me, for instance, I'm keeping my left hip down towards my foot, avoiding hip hiking. I'm keeping my hips as a whole slightly translated to the right because I have a tendency to translate them to the left. And I'm avoiding the left lateral flexion or tilting my rib cage down while also engaging my multifidus muscles, those small stabilizing muscles. If you're not sure what your RPI is or neutral spine is, you, that's all based on a body analysis. We have that in all of our PainTreeAndFit.com products on the website, as well as the free body analysis section that's available on that website. So, once I engage that, I'm going to use a motion that includes lifting my arms upwards. My elbows are going to stay somewhere around 90 degrees. They don't have to be exactly at 90 but I'm going to lift my elbows as I lift my wrists. You see that motion? That's externally rotating or moving my upper arm outwards, taking the point of my elbow and moving it in, the front of my elbow and moving out. As I do this, if my low back is in an acute state of pain, I want to keep my chin down. That avoids too much lifting up and extension in my lower back and localizes the forces to my shoulder and upper back muscles. And if you notice when you do this, you're going to feel tension all along the back side of your shoulder blade, your mid-back in between your back. It's opening up your chest and strengthening the weak muscles that disallow extension. Extension is what keeps that pressure off our disc. If I'm not in an acute stage of back pain, meaning I have my degenerative herniated bulging disc, but it's not necessarily aggravating me today, 
then I can actually lift my chin up a little bit and allow my mid back between my shoulder blades to extend or lift my collarbone up slightly. That engages more of the extensors all the way from my head and neck all the way down to my lower back. So that second version would look like this. As I come up, I lift my collarbone a little bit as I rotate upwards. Again, I'm trying not to extend my neck so much. I'm keeping my face pulled back towards the back of my head, avoiding that mistake, and avoiding the mistake of hunching my shoulders up into my ears. My shoulder blades are pinned down a little bit towards my lower back. But as my arms rotate up with the weight, I'm lifting my collarbone just a little bit. Now I can do this for repetitions, ranging from 10 up to 50 reps. Again, we want high reps for postural endurance type exercise motions and muscle patterns. And I can also do this for isometric times where I'm holding the top position for prolonged periods of time using static holds, building up the isometric strength. Both of these exercises help me in the long run to have the strength to avoid having my shoulders and my arms at the shoulder joint roll in and have that forward flex posture. It helps me to keep an upright posture, maintaining lordosis in my lower back by training the upper back and shoulder area. If you like this video on shoulder and upper back training to help prevent lower back disc herniation, bulges, and degenerative pain, check out our website. Feel free to subscribe to it. We've got a lot of great videos for lower back disc degeneration, herniation, and bulges. Questions or comments, write in as always. I'll do my best to answer them. Thumbs up to help me share this valuable information with others. And remember, if you're looking to put together a program for yourself in terms of how to analyze your own back body, body mechanics, not only in the back, but also your whole kinetic chain from your head through your feet, and how to construct a exercise program that's tailored for your unique mechanics, changing them and improving the stability of your lower back condition, check out our fast track program for degenerative disc disease available at painfreeandfit.com. I hope this prone external rotation lift exercise helps you with your chronic degenerative herniated and bulging discs in your lower back.